Hi guys, I'm Kiri. Welcome to another episode of Kiri's Garage and today's car is Talbot Solara. This French car manufacturer was a big name in the world motor industry. But nowadays the brand doesn't exist anymore. Once was a French company, then British company, very long and interesting history behind the name Talbot. But in more modern days, the company in some time was owned by Simca. This is again French car manufacturer. Then the American Empire Chrysler bought Talbot. And under Chrysler, Simca Talbot developed some very modern and luxury models, like Horizon, Tagora and Solara, the car in front of us. But the Chrysler ownership wasn't for a long time again. They sold the company to the French giant PSA in 1979. Under Chrysler ownership, the cars were batched as a Simca. But once Peugeot Citroën took the ownership, the Simca cars were rebatched as a Talbot. They wanted to use this name simply because it was much more prestigious than Simca. And of course, PSA wanted to bring something more fresh and more desirable on the market. The Talbot cars were manufactured in France, Britain, Spain, Finland and some other countries. The British factory manufactured the models Alpine, which in Europe is known as a 1307 model, then Solara and Horizon. There was another not that popular model called Samba. Talbot Samba was a very small hatchback or convertible based on the Peugeot 104 chassis. We mentioned earlier the model Tagora, which was the top Talbot car. Arrival to the Mercedes W123, BMW 5 Series, Ford Granada, Vauxhall or Opel Record, in France was rival to Peugeot 604, Citroën CX and maybe Renault 30. But the sales never been what PSA was expecting. In 1979, for example, Ford sold 200,000 Cortina cars in UK and Talbot sold just 30,000 Alpine cars. In total, for the same year, Talbot sold 120,000 cars from all models in UK, only outsold by Ford and British Leyland. But next year the sales went rapidly down and was very hard for Peugeot Citroën Group to take the right decision. On the end, in mid-1980s, PS8 discontinued all the Talbot models except the van Talbot Express which was axed in early 1990s. This was the short story of the Talbot brand, but now we need to give our attention to the car in front of us. One of the worst Talbot models, Talbot Solara. This car was introduced in April 1980 in Europe, a few months later in UK, and was built on the Simca 1307 or Chrysler Alpine chassis. But instead of hatchback, this time more modern four-door saloon. Was very clever design because, as we said, was based on Simca 1307 or Chrysler Horizon chassis. And the doors actually are the same. Very similar front end, just the back end instead of hatchback is saloon with boot. Something similar years later Alfa Romeo will do with the Model 75. Same doors like the predecessor Alfa Romeo Giulietta, but this was ok because the company saved money from developing completely new model from scratch. The Talbot brand was very popular in UK because of the history. Even PSA Group were thinking when they introduced the new Peugeot models in mid 1980s to be sold in UK as a Talbot. So imagine instead of Peugeot 205 GTI. Talbot 205 GTI or Peugeot 309, anyway. Solara was a mid-class car, rival of Ford Cortina. Was much more modern front-wheel drive transversely mounted engine which allows much more space in the cabin. Big glasses, the dashboard was more futuristic with some very advanced electronic gadgets, trip computer and with more attention to the detail inside. For 1980 really was very beautiful clean design. On the same time very simple, but the people liked it, which was the most important on the end. There were different trim levels for the model, for the UK market, the basic LE, then LS, GL, GLS, and on the top was an SX. Different trim, different equipments, like alloy wheels, metallic paint or even two-tone metallic paint. Different engines, 1.3 or 1.6 liters. We mentioned earlier the trip computer inside was available for the GLS version. But the top of the range and the best equipped with everything was the SX, very similar to the big brother Talbot Tagora SX. In 1982, Talbot made a wide range of modifications to the Solara model, 
the most important update was the new Peugeot 5 speed gearbox. The old ones were 4 speed from Simca and Citroën. Of course, many parts were from Peugeot and Citroën, on the end was part of the French giant PSA Peugeot Citroën. But it seems PSA couldn't find the right way to keep the three brands Peugeot Citroën Taubot in the market. They were saying the cars are almost identical, they rival one to each other and the people doesn't like that. In my opinion, they were wrong and Volkswagen Group proved that. Some years later, for example, Volkswagen Group was producing many different cars brands using the same platform or even very identical design. They have Škoda, Seat, Volkswagen, Audi, even now Cupra. Very similar cars or SUVs, Volkswagen, Audi, Bentley and Lamborghini. Very similar again, so this model is working and working very successfully. So they prove a car manufacturer can sell many different brands on the same platform. But PSA just said enough is enough and they decided to get rid of the Taubot. So the last Taubot Solara or any other Taubot was produced in 1985, except as we said early some van models for some markets. Last Solara car was produced in 1985, maybe some are registered in 1986, but let's say mid of 1980s. Talbot made in total for the 5-6 year production time from 1980 to 1985 184,976 Solara cars, which is actually a good number, but wasn't good for the PSA group. Today it's extremely rare to see a Solara on the road. Maybe you can see some on car meetings or classic car shows, but again will be very rare. Like most cars from that time they had rust issues as well, so the rust was the biggest killer for most of the Solara cars. And because it wasn't an expensive car, so it wasn't worth it to repair. That's why all of them, with some exceptions, went to the scrapyard for recycling. For the time Solara was a very good car, very reliable, was very very well sorted. And this didn't happen just like that. As we said before, it was based on the Simca 1307 or Chrysler Horizon, which was chosen as the 1975 European car of the year. Very prestigious prize for the best car. Was very attractive car with amazing for the time style. Very clean design, the drag coefficient was very good as well, so very slippery and of course very economical, especially with the small 1.3 liter engine. I think for UK it was 1.4 and 1.6 liters engines only, but for Europe the smallest was 1.3. Was time 1970s and 80s when the car manufacturers started to give more attention to the fuel consumption, especially after 1973 world oil crisis. The small engines were very popular and they were much more efficient. Also front wheel drive cars became mass production and this combination Front wheel drive, very good aerodynamic, lightweight cars was the key factor for the fuel consumption. Later, the fuel injection was an important factor as well. But Solara was very innovative, entry level mid class car with lots of space inside, good for 5 people. When we said inside, Solara was really very comfortable and even luxury. The seats were covered with velour, in most cases beige or some light shade, so very nice touch. Very comfortable front seats with fast release tilted mechanism. The back seats again very comfortable and compared with other rivals was a way ahead and more futuristic. Lots of space for the passengers on the rear seats. The car was really very good for long journeys, especially if it's with the big 1.6 liter engine and higher trim level. So electric front windows, trip computer, 5 speed gearbox, nice and expensive radio cassette player sunroof, the car was really fantastic for the price. We forgot to mention the heating system or the ventilation. This was one of the first car with lots of vents on the dash and some other places. Probably Taubot realized the ventilation is very important for the comfort so they pay lots of attention to this part of the car. So again this was very smart design and business model if you want just to put a boot in the existing hatchback model, keep the same chassis, same doors and glass except the back. This is the easy and the very cheap way to introduce a new model. As we mentioned earlier Alfa Romeo did in the mid 80s with the model Giulietta in 75. Not only Alfa Romeo, many other companies did this and they proved that this way working and actually how to exist a bit more on the market. 
but inside the car was very different, which is actually very important. So if the same driver sitting in the original car, in this case Simca 1307 or Chrysler Horizon, then sit in the new version Solara, the car inside is very different. And the driver will feel this is completely new car. The interior is very important and Taubot Solara was very modern for 1980, especially the top of the range with the trip computer, top end, radio, cassette player, sunroof, electric windows, etc. etc. The prices when new were between 4000 and 6300 British pounds for the top version SX. The technical spec is great for 1980 car. Oh, they are four cylinder in line, transversely mounted. The 1.5 liter is 70 horsepower with 117 newton meters of torque. Average fuel consumption 8.2 liters per 100 kilometers or 34 miles per gallon. Acceleration from 0 to 62 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour 16.5 seconds with maximum speed 157 kilometers per hour or 99 miles per hour. Just over 1 ton, 1046 kilograms, this is for the 4 speed manual gearbox, independent McPherson front suspension, anti roll bar, back is torsion beam, tires 165 SR13, front disc brakes, drum on the rear, wheelbase is 2.6 meters, very good for the passengers on the rear seats, the car is long, just under 4.4 meters, 1680 millimeters wide, and is high just under 1.4 meters. The 1.6 liter was the biggest engine and the most powerful, 90 horsepower. The performance was better, 0 to 62 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour, 12.7 seconds. Maximum speed 167 kilometers per hour or 104 miles per hour, so 10 kilometers per hour more than the 1.5 liter engine. Roughly the same weight, but this time with 5 speed gearbox and was very good for long cruises. 120 km per hour or 74 miles per hour, the RPM shows just over 3000. Absolutely no stress for the engine and very quiet inside indeed. The same tires, suspension and brakes as 1.5 liter model. We're gonna mention the 1.3 liter version, the smallest, the cheapest of course, was just 54 horsepower. And the performance is not that great, but for the city was amazing car. So guys, Taubot Solara was very cool mid-size 1980 car, very modern, even much more modern and attractive than the rivals. And it's shame today the brand Taubot doesn't exist anymore, and I will be happy if one day we see again the brand on the streets, like MG, let's say MG many years ago disappeared from the roads, but from a couple of years we see again MG on the road, which is great, so I will be happy to see again Taubot brand on the road. So guys, I hope you liked the video about this very cool 1980 Tawot Solara. If you like, please subscribe my channel and see you next time guys. Bye.